So good evening and welcome to this week's Circle of Harmony. And before we begin and delve into the topic, let's take a few moments to just breathe, gather ourselves, like breathe consciously, we know we are always breathing. But just paying attention to our breath. Stabilizing ourselves in our breath. Invoking mother's presence and grace and aspiring that we are able to let go of past patterns and see more through the words and teachings and grace of the mother and Sri Aurobindo and divine in general. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, the topic today is embracing shamefulness, embracing shame. And before we delve into, you know, the words or further extrapolations, I thought that maybe we can start with what shame means to me. You know, like, I don't know, when I was, you know, just before the session, I was, when I was sitting with the word shame, I felt that, you know, there are certain words that if I even take it out from my mouth or if I'm just thinking about them, there's something in me which wants to just not look at them. It just wants to shrug them under a carpet. You know, like I said, the word shame. Uh, there was a vibration inside, a repulsion that, no, 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 don't go there. When I say the word lust, I felt the same thing. They don't, don't go there. Like as if, I mean, I don't know whether there's actually something there to be scared of, to be avoided, or this is just another mechanism for it to maintain itself, right? That because when I don't confront anything, I would not know what it is. And when I don't know what it is, I can never face it. I can never heal it. I can never know it, right? Because to heal it, I will need to know it. So just was wondering at that, that what a weird setup it is that instead of me being able to see the things which cause me, which cause stir, I usually, my natural reaction is to just step back and just say, no, 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 maybe some other time. Yeah, so please, uh, I would re remind you that this is a sharing circle in the beginning only. And if we can keep our cameras on, that would be wonderful. If not, that's all right. But if we could unmute and share what shame means to me, like if I just hear the word shame or shamelessness, you know, anything of this nature, what, what do I, what comes to me or what I think it is? Yes, please, thank you. For me, Taru, it's partly guilt. It's a guilt feeling. If I go back and I think of a few things which I feel, you know, I would have liked to change if I've been too angry or if I feel that I've done something wrong. I feel quite ashamed of myself. And you're so right. One doesn't want to go there. One doesn't feel like looking at it. And you'd rather ignore it brush it under the carpet, give it the name shame, whatever, but it's simpler to push it under the carpet.
And if you have to define shame, say there was a child and he says that, what is shame? How would you define it as like what, what naturally what's just coming to you, not going into any extremes? Yeah, so Lakshana Ji, I'm just uh, requesting you to define shame if you could. Like you said guilt, right? That's all you'll say about it? Or would you, how would you explain that to a child, what shame is? You're on, you're on mute. Something, you're yeah. something I've done or something which I don't, which I regret. Okay. Something that I would regret. For me, that would be, you know, shame. And if I may further go in, why do I regret? Because I feel I, uh, I don't like myself for it, for having done or said that. And is it I who has that? You know, criteria that this is good or bad or that too I'm picking from outside. Well, naturally that goes with the conditioning. So it might not be, it might be okay, it might not be okay, but because of certain conditionings, I know this thing I know is bad, this thing I know is good, right? Right, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, anyone else who would please uh, like to just share what they uh, feel about shame? Yeah, for me, I mean, right now nothing comes to mind about shame I'm feeling, but, you know, it, it comes more from, you know, embarrassment, you know, that it causes to family, you know. Uh, you know, something, it could be so many things that, you know, say you've been, you know, I'm just taking general example. I'm sorry, I can't. I'm not getting your example for myself. But yeah, like, yeah, say, if you you know anything. you're being arrested, uh, you know, for something by cops, or you know, and that brings shame, you know, or you know, you know, man, you know, whatever. You're being caught red-handed in office doing something, you know, and you're being, you know, to your employment has been terminated. So I would think. I can think more of these kind of things that it has brought shame to oneself and family, you know. I don't know if I'm, I mean, if it's making sense. I mean, is it in the same line as your... Yeah, yeah. But like, uh, just if I say that, okay, I don't know what shame is. Like you're giving me examples, right? Like what causes right. shame? But if uh, what is shame according to you? Yeah, again, like, I mean, you, you know, mentioned a few minutes back, it's something, it's something that has been defined, you know, at some level. And you feel that, uh, you know, it may be not, it's not the right thing to do. And, you know, you have done it, you know, which has caused shame, you know. But I, I only can't get right now that, you know, where I feel like shame, you know, and that in that sense, maybe there are other emotions, but it's not coming out straight away. Like, you know, that, oh, I'm so shameful for this, you know. Yeah. Um, I guess, you know, for me, it is if I've done it, I've done it, you know. I've not felt that kind of, oh, you know, shameful. That's, uh, maybe it's not something at that level I would have done that I feel shameful about, you know. You know, it's not that I'm biased or something, but if I've done, I've I've done and I've accepted it the way it is, you know, is what I'm saying. I've never yeah. felt that thing, I'm feeling shame now, you know, about this. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Thank you for this. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, please. Um... Yeah, Syam, uh, are you there? Can you talk? Yeah, well, Hello. Yes, hi. Yeah, Tarush, for at a very personal level, shame is something of sort of emotion uh, which arises from an element of guilt in my mind that I have done something lousy. Yes. Uh, that I have been a pesky element to somebody. 
and it have done no good to me and it have moreover it have brought out the worst for both me and the person in front of me okay yes sham thank you again it is a kind of realism for me because i can see that what i have done to myself and to the person in front of me suppose i if i impinge on anyone's personal freedom whether knowingly or unknowingly or inadvertently then certainly i am doing something wrong in that area suppose i bother somebody unnecessarily without any concrete reason then certainly i am doing something that is not acceptable and deep down within me also i know that i am doing something out of way that is shame for me i know i am not defining and rather example for that but no no this is good yeah i just wanted us all to think right so that we can, yeah. things are a little bit because we know what we are dealing it with it right because we don't usually think about these things so there is no right or wrong this is great like you know what i consider shame to be right yeah so this is great. and it is something that is that is a recognizable reality for me i can recognize it that yes this is something that i have done shameful it is not something on imaginary telling it is a recognizable reality very much for me yeah that's really good yes <laughs> yeah that you know it reminds me that once uh, on in a retreat acharya prashant you know uh, he had said something like this that i think it was something on guilt and shame guilt mostly and he said the problem is not that i did something wrong the problem is that it you know everybody came to know about it or i came to know about it and it's like causing me pain so usually if we do some wrong doing and it doesn't cause cause pain or nobody knows who did it we are okay so this is also a play that happens na that the recognizability that yes something has been done wrong so yes thank you for reminding that कि मैंने कोई गलती करी है और मैं उसको बहुत ही क्लियरली देख पा रहा हूँ कि मैंने गलती करी है सो दैट इज समथिंग वेल thank you sir yes sarta ji anything from you yeah so uh, uh, for me also it is a regret taro so if i if i have done anything wrong you know if i come to know about it you know immediately after doing that very thing if i come to know about it not if i will definitely come to know about it i used to feel very very bad very guilty i don't want to face anyone it will be a very very you know hurting feeling for me that is called shame whether it hurts the other one or anything Uh, but it will definitely hurt me first i used to feel terrible oh. i always feel that you know i can go back to that same incident then i can rearrange it and come back hmm. also it takes me back you know to a session we had maybe a month and a half or two months back you know where we I discuss a topic, you know, what is right and wrong, you know, who defines that. So, you know, is it also at play somewhere here, right? You know, like you know that I rem you remember that session we had. I mean, I really found it very interesting because you know we always keep saying that this is we have done something wrong, or you know, we have done something. You remember that, Taru? Yes, yes, yes. yeah so you know this come back there you know that again we everyone is saying that we've done something wrong and you know and i remember you said you know who says who defines that you know and for all you know it may be the right thing at that point you know so am i connecting uh, it somewhere you know you're getting yeah, yeah, what i'm for, saying yeah exactly yeah you know that's yeah. what all these you know thoughts were kind of linking at that i think i perceive i believe that something wrong was done and now i feel guilty about it i feel the shame i feel i've hurt someone and 
And the question is that, is that true? You know, like, and I, you know, one other thing that was coming to me was that how helpful is it? You know, because if some mistake was made, what is the right way? What actually helps now? Is it, does shame help? Does guilt help? And if it doesn't help, or it rather pains, what is the right approach? Because, you know, I remember mother saying, yes, yeah, so do you wanted to share something? No, no. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah. sorry. You know, mother says that if you have made a mistake, you know, if you know you have made the mistake and now you have kind of, you know, you have this thing that, no, now I know what I did and I would not do that again. She says that's enough, like that's more than enough because now that you have seen it, it will be dropped. So she said even going and apologizing to somebody is not needed. If you have recognized something, that's it, just that. But do I do that, right? Like usually I go to a lot more places. So I have ideas, right? I have things and people and situations which I, whom I compare myself to or others. I have my list of rights and wrongs. And then I, you know, have this guilt or victim or shame or appreciation, all these things that come. But what they are basing on is something just out there, right? That I myself creating things defining them, comparing them, and then feeling shameful and guilty for most. You know, like, say, for example, just going back to what we were, we just were came. So guilt, some guilt that, okay, I've done something bad. Again, something I have done, which I regret, right? So I am per perceiving that thing to be bad. Culturally, you know, it depends on culture, family, religion, what is good, what is bad. So in my culture, it's bad. And yet it eats me up. For humanity, it might be okay. I want to push it under the carpet. Embarrassment caused to the family, right? Again, I have those preconceived notions and I have those images. And my duties and responsibility that this is good, this is bad. For this, I'll be appreciated. For that, I should be reminded. Arrested by cops, you know, when uh, Cyrus, you said this, I suddenly thought of, you know, the freedom fighters, for example. Or I don't know, you know, Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King Jr. You know, again, I think everything is not about right or wrong, right? Conventional right or wrong. Everything is relative. Everything, yeah, one thing that can be so right, say, again, going back to the freedom fighting for Indians, could be the worst crime for the British. So it's all subjective, all objective, all relative. And yet when I feel something, it just pulls me down, right? Like people commit suicide in shame, in guilt. Their lives are spent. In guilt sometimes for one thing I did. So doing something wrong, it's an emotion, element of guilt always is there, which just eats you up, right? If I, if I just say the word aloud, guilt, there's something uneasy I feel, right? So done something lousy, worse for me and others, recognizable because I have to compare, right? I have to recognize guilty, mistake, something that shouldn't have been done but was done, regret, hurt, and right and wrong. Yeah, so that was the main thing. But in every, all of these, this element of Comparison, idols, rights, and wrong, how what Cyrus has pointed out, had pointed out, is coming out very strongly. So, like I was sharing in the beginning, you know how 
we like to push it under the rug. So I was thinking that just as a two minute exercise, let's close our eyes. Let's think of one thing. Somehow, you know, Cyrus said there is absolutely nothing. I find it hard to believe being human. But if there is nothing, there is nothing. But if I could just recall one thing that I would say not be comfortable sharing with, say, my child or my father or I don't know, with others. And I just see what, what comes to me, you know, what movement I'm feeling inside of me. And we can just, we maybe don't even have to share. But one shameful act that if I may feel, just to confront it right now, because we are taking the session, we are, you know, we are meeting in this session, that why does it want to hide? What is it that it's trying to save? Just giving it two minutes. yes so if there's any reflection we can take that otherwise i just wanted to give ourselves two minutes to see that we are shying away and we don't have to that we'll talk more about it Haru, just now you were mentioning that mother is saying that, you know, if you had done something wrong, just correct yourself and don't need to feel bad about it, you know. But uh, that very feeling is not going away. See, you have done something, missed. you have done something wrong, you have done something wrong. That, uh, you know, that memory keeps coming again and again, again and again. It just really, you know, uh, not a good feeling. It, it is uh, very, very, you know, what to say, very uncomfortable feeling. You know, it, it, it is not allowing me to concentrate on what I have to do. So it is just disturbing me. So how to remove that uh, um, guilt feeling? You know, mother says, yes, you correct yourself and go forward. But, you know, <laughs> it, it is not happening. So recently uh, in uh, Meera's engagement, you know, something happened. Somebody said something, then I, uh, I couldn't take it. So, but I didn't show it outside, but it was inside me. It took, you know, it, it hurt me very badly. Some two, three days I was just with it. Then I thought it's okay, it's okay. And on that very day, engagement day, I was thinking, no, why not? I mean, living in present, you know, so what some, somebody saying is not going to matter. It is okay, no problem. So let me concentrate on what I have to do. Everything I did, but you know, that function went very well and we came back home. After two, three days also, the, I'm, I was not able to come out of that feeling. It, it really tortured me. Because of that, I behaved some, you know, differently to someone else. So that behavior was, you know, even now, even today it came in front of me, how how did you behave in such a way to that person? I have decided not to behave that way in future, but you know, that, that very uh, incident is not going out of my mind. Yes, Sadhaji, thank you. Yeah, I really like your, you know, examples and everyday life issues because that's what really we need to change, right? Yeah. 
So when I close my eyes just now, when you said, even the same incident was coming. And how I behaved, I could see my behavior was not very pleasant that time. So if there is any any way to, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like I can definitely share, you know, there would be so many answers to this question. And just, uh, you know, my child is playing with Legos. Are we getting disturbance or is this okay? Are you see, uh, hearing a no. background noise? No, okay, no, no, nothing at all. Okay, thank you so much. I was just wondering. I've told him twice. To Let him enjoy it. Down. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, Sarada ji, basically, see, the first thing is that I know I am not perfect. You know? And they say that is why I am here. Because on earth, we come to evolve, to grow. So, if I make mistakes, that is absolutely okay because by making mistakes is what I learn and I do make mistakes right now where the consciousness in which I am operating, I have to accept that it's not just one. I make so many mistakes, right? All these thoughts where I am lost, this world of illusions which I am considering as real, every breath that I am taking without consciousness is a mistake, right? When I can be present, I am not. So if I actually look at the list of the wrongs, technical wrongs that I am doing, it's endless. So first of all, what all will I feel shame or guilt for, right? If I live in honesty, if I'm sincere, there is a lot, lot, lot that it's like a mountain that I can bury myself under. You know, there are so many beggars on the street, for example. How can I eat, overeat? Again and again. How can I not help them if I can? There are so many orphans. There are so many stray dogs, for example, right? So much is happening with the environment. Why am I not bothered with it? Just saying that if we talk about mistakes or wrongdoings, mm -hmm. you know, the, they say that the moment another human is born, we, we can minimum take that three acres of forest are wiped out. You know, his books, his papers, his whatever, his needs, that's the minimum. So my being born kind of is heavy on nature, right? So I think one thing is to see the bigger picture that yes, and accepting that yes, I make mistakes and mm -hmm. yet being so grateful that now I'm not living in that ignorance that I make mistakes and I'm like, nothing happened. They mm. hurt me. I'm that sensitive, right? Mm. And this is the sensitivity that mother was talking about. That now that mm. you're sensitive and you can see that, yes, this mistake was done. You own mm. it. You accept it. That's mm. all you need to do because rest on Sadaji is drama, right? Again, anything that you now think about, brood over, feel guilty about or feel victim about because he did it, so he made you do it, for example, mm. that's mm. all just taking me away from my center, right? I have better things to do, I know. So I okay. can replace it with japa, right? Like It's a thought, right? It's just a thought. It's just a feeling. It's just try something trying to overtake me. And you know, mm. it's like if I if you would have done certain things in the past too, right? Which were mm. maybe worse than this. But then mm. right now, why is this sitting on your neck and pressing it? You know, we can think about that because this is fresh drama. It doesn't have yes. much authenticity, right? So this freshness factor right now is playing at us. But if we recognize the way it works, right? At that time, that was big. Now you can maybe smile about it and old mistakes. Right now, this is big. After two years, you will be smiling about this one. So if I have to, you know, just looking at it that way, it takes time. I know what you're saying. We all do, right? We have all, we are all in the same boat. We know how it, you know, rocks and how it does. And yet, because we do have the blessings to now step back and see more. Mm. I can see that, you know, there's no welfare there. Like, you know, how my mind, my feelings, my thoughts, they want to take me to places. I have to choose. I always choose, right? So what am I choosing this moment? 
am i choosing the drama or am i choosing that okay yes i have done it i own it what's next now right i brush it off that yes i owned it i did it mm. now i know better so good you know my journey here my reason here is evolution and growth and i'm glad it happened that meant that i still was capable of do it and maybe i'm more capable of do it doing it again but my i know this was bad and i want to give it up right that in itself is why salvation you know mother say then you know that was something that hit me really strongly that i don't look at your past right i don't look at your faults i look at yes. your possibility right yeah. there mm -hmm. you know everything is covered in that so same way like a mother looks at a child you know if meera were to do this and she if you see her sitting and just you know kind of feeling guilty again and again day over day you would say oh, come on man brush you know come on child brush it off now you have recognized it you have offered it you have you know you would probably not do it again even if you do you again it's good then again you will be more conscious and we are here to learn so if i make a mistake it's okay it's good rather that that i mistake you know i'm making mistakes i'm living i'm not a machine and i'm recognizing i'm making a mistake right so giving ourselves that credit and then just offering ourselves again and again right it being me i will make mistakes you know may all mistakes you know you help me not to make any mistake give it to giving it to the higher one and loving ourselves and recognizing that yes i do make mistakes i am not perfect yet i am recognizing so many of them and i'm grateful for that beautiful tar thank you so much thank you so much yeah most beautiful. so you always give this example you know if meera does if your child is doing if your child is not happy then how will you feel yeah then you know that really uh, comes to the mind you know even we should not feel that yeah we should not feel guilty always it's okay no problem <laughs> yeah thank you thank you so much it you really know, it's, it's actually sad sarda ji that we have to give this example to ourselves i give it to myself to others like why can't we love ourselves like we love our children right like it, it's wrong we must aspire to have that love and that you know freedom that openness to life mm. and mistakes like a, my child make mistakes i too am a mother's child right like i too am learning if i ask you are you perfect what would be your answer oh and nobody can be 100% perfect everybody will yeah, be we all mistake. try right we are trying yeah. i know i am not perfect so then why do yeah. making a mistake means something you know about hurting people how much could it have hurt somebody and we know that if somebody is hurting us it's my responsibility if somebody hurts me it's not their issue right so then it's yeah. on him or her also not brushing my hands off the thing i did and yet it's okay right because if it's taught me something you know if yeah. anything has helped me evolve no matter what price we have to pay for it and we do pay huge prices like seemingly huge prices we pay mm. because otherwise we don't learn you know it's like gods are kind but because we are so in dullness and ignorance and you know jadta that you know how again they say pain is the hammer of god right to break mm. the dead resistance found in mortal soul what what do the gods do if we don't listen unless it hurt and let it pain you know so if you would have done it and you would mm. not have felt anything would you even be talking about it thinking about it no so pain is good you know physical pain mental pain emotional pain is good it tells that something was wrong right but now that i know something is wrong you know i would share this with you that when we have physical pain they say that it is an indication that something is not okay you mm. haven't eaten right or something is not okay with the body so one of the mechanisms are the ji the for mm. relieving the pain it's like that if you connect with that pain you know there's a nerve that's saying it's hurting me my head is hurting my head is hurting my head is hurting 
So you connect within and you tell that nerve, that pain sensation, say, thank you for informing me that something is wrong. You have my attention now. I know mm -hmm. something is wrong. I'll see what I have to do about it. You can rest now. I'm aware. And it goes away. Oh, beautiful. Okay. So, this, so you know, these things that, okay, it's there to teach us. Mm -hmm. And that's it. So again, if I, you know, what is the focus? Just me and what I was supposed to do and I what ended up doing. But what is my purpose? What is my aim of life? The aim is evolution of consciousness, right? Growing, becoming better and better and better. Did this instance, no matter what I did in it, did it make me a better person now? I think the answer is yes, right? Now yes. I'm more conscious. That's it. That's it. Other thing, anything more than that is my drama. Okay. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. It makes sense. Yes. There is this aspect of shame that we have covered a little bit. We'll talk more. It's a good topic. I just realized it more and more. And then there is embracing shamelessness, right? So once we, right now, we just spoke about what shame means to me. And now if we look at this, like how, well, then why would we want to embrace shamelessness, you know? Because shame, according to what all we have discussed, is bad. Why would we want to accept it and embrace it? What do we get from that? So any thoughts on that before we delve into this aspect? Can you please repeat that if you don't mind? I just lost you for a minute. Yeah, so Cyrus, I was saying that till now, we all were discussing that how we perceive shame and how we perceive it's a bad thing, right? We don't want it. And yet the topic today is not shame, right? It's embracing shamefulness. So inviting reflections right. on that, that why would I talk about, reflect on, want to embrace shamefulness? Maybe because you, you know, then you, you don't keep pressurizing yourself by feeling guilty all the time. You know? Is that one of the ways? I mean, you know. Yeah, absolutely, because guilt was in almost everybody's answer, right? Correct. So this way, you know, I mean, you put us, yeah, like you said, it's happened, you know, and we, you know, can now learn and accept and move on, you know, so embrace it and take it as a learning and, you know, obviously it's easier said than done, you know, sometimes with habits, but uh, this is the way I guess you can embrace it and maybe take a step forward, you know. Yeah. You know, I had shared this before because I really strongly resonated with it. Like in Art of Living, you know, Sri Sri once said that the day you lose your respect is a day of celebration because that is the day you start living freely. That's the day you live in freedom. You know, we spoke about these images that we hold ourselves to. So many moralities and do's and don'ts and rights and wrongs, which again are just relative, we discussed that. And if for me, you know, because see, we are all part of a society and the society has norms, it has these rules, it has regulations, it has do's, it has duties, it has responsibilities. And we follow that, follow that, follow that till one day when we can't. You know how mother says that there are moralities and duties and responsibilities and the regular law. And yet 
there is a shift that takes place in which now those laws are not applicable to you because you fall under the divine law now and for that you have to be shameful because first of all you don't feel a shame because it's a lot of time choiceless you just cannot live that life anymore you know i'm so sorry but i re remember you know uh, sulakshna ji sharing in one of the sessions i don't remember which one it was that she didn't want to go anywhere somewhere with her partner and she was feeling not good about it that she had to say no what did what would he expect and letting people down and stuff and yet what about me letting myself down all the time so many times so many times there are things i don't want to do but i'm like okay you know just do it it will make the other person happy just do it it's not that bad you know we uh, monica and i we know somebody again an amazing 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 person and she was recently diagnosed with a very bad disease and stuff very very severe and we connected with her and she said that you know the one thing i realized that, that there was so much people pleasing i was doing you know right now say if for this disease a doctor is saying you must do this you must do that but there is a feeling inside me there is a voice inside me that says that no i don't want to do, go for this therapy or i don't want to get this diagnosis it's useless my my body is telling me it's useless and here my husband is crying ki kara lena please why are you taking that risk and yet you know it will harm your body it will harm you more than it will do you good so she said that it has it is teaching me that now to stand by what i believe in to say no i know this is not good for me so i don't know how i am able to act to i i was able to articulate what i have been what i am trying to say but if today i want to stand and say that i don't want to follow your dictates i have to be shameful i mean that word is actually not correct because i would rather say i have to be courageous but there are always 10 fingers that would be pointed at me or 100 she she's the one or he is the one he is breaking the norms he is breaking the society he will break his family he will you know uh, cyrus said about i think uh, parents or i don't know like uh, what there was the comment right that family that you are disrespecting the family you are causing them hurt what about me what is my obligation my responsibility my duty my love for me what about that until when will i suppress it so the topic you know came around two months back i had made this poster uh, shilpi who used to come very regularly on harmony circle she was on one i think she had come to the heroic heart session once and she had said this that now that i know how to live shamelessly i feel now i have truly started living you know and she didn't say these exact words but she mentioned she touched upon the beauty of having no shame or you know having shamelessness that i am here to grow evolve i will make mistakes that's okay i do make mistakes if you try to say and you know pin me down and bring guilt i will not take it i don't want it yeah okay i did something bad okay i'm sorry i'll i'll look at it and if it's something i'll work on it but why will i go into shame or guilt and stuff i i'm sorry i have done that enough and i think for a sadhak you know who's trying to maybe you know one thing is you're walking along the flow right you're swimming along the flow the opposite thing is going against the flow but i'm saying just to stand while the flow is trying to take me somewhere also needs a lot of courage and one can say one has to be shameful because everybody would say that see he or she is not walking 
flowing with the flow. So context based And you know, it's very interesting that they say that only man has shame, right? The animals, they don't feel any shame. So it is man-made, really. When because we have those images, those norms, and then people go against them, there is shame. Yeah, please, any reflections, any comments, please unmute and share. So, you know, one example that comes to me of shamelessness or living like absolutely courageously is of, you know, Mirabai. You know, how she did everything according to the norm. She got married when they were, she was asked to get married. She followed the dictates, most norms, and yet there were things that she just couldn't do. And she stood by that. And how tough it was, we all know the type of, you know, humiliation she got from her in, you know, especially I think mother-in-law and brother-in-law, they say. So much hurt she caused, you know, to others, to the society. We can say from our eyes, that is the hurt that she caused. And yet, what do we remember? Do we remember the hurt she caused? to her family or do we remember her love, her longing, her devotion to Krishna? Her devotion is what we remember, you're right. So if that is something that we remember years and years and years after her passing, why do I always stick to my shame, first of all? Why do even for feeling devoted today, I have to feel shame if I am missing out on other things or not giving others what they want? Maybe I'm not courageous enough. Yes, and then I must aspire for courage. So, you know, the thing is... Yes, absolutely. So, the first thing is that I firstly feel shame because I think I'm doing something wrong. So, the first step is to know that no, it's wrong. A lot of things are not wrong. If I'm Following my inner voice, that's not wrong. If I'm following some dictates coming from within, that's not wrong. So that's the first step. That I at least will not, I will be standing by my side, you know, coming from last few sessions topic. That I am by my side and I'll say, you point as many fingers as you want to in my direction. That's fine. That's what you have to do. You do that. But I know I know it's a choicelessness almost for me now and I want to now be that. And that takes courage. That takes courage when there are so many people or, you know, just one person who you, you know, want to be, you know, want to approve of you or love you it takes a lot of courage. And if I don't have the courage, I have to aspire for courage. Yes, Shyam, please. Yeah, Taru, at a very personal level, that embracing the idea of shamelessness, it is something of sort of self-love also. Because I have the courage of convictions to say no to things I don't want to. Suppose if I don't want to go somewhere with my friends and all those parties and all that, I say loudly, boldly and clearly that I don't want to go. Please leave me alone in my own labyrinth. Okay, so that is a sort of uh, a sort of shamelessness. People may say that he's arrogant, a snobbish, and all that, aloof, and all that. But then I am not comfortable. I will say it loudly and clearly that I don't wanna go. Please leave me alone. 
so for me it is a kind of self love too what we were discussing in the last three sessions probably and although yes, yeah. like i said once that although at 31 i am unmarried so people in my family don't pressurize me but people in office and some of my friends but many of my friends are un- unmarried too okay so but people in my office they mostly tell me that why are you unmarried and all that but i say that even if i am unmarried i am not causing any harm to anybody it's for personal choice i am not stalking anyone i am not bothering anyone unnecessarily so i am very much all right in my own little ways and in my own little world you know i'm surprised that you even have to give that explanation it feels like it's a disease but it's not contagious and you're not harm anybody no but it's i have to say that now that i didn't stalk anyone and i didn't do anything out of way so no i was just laughing at how we perceive that you know being unmarried is something bad that in itself is funny right like that but in the indian to... society it is like that that people will poke fun at you and they will say all sorts of good and bad things about you that <laughs> and yeah. they will be perceived in an altogether different light that's okay that's always there that's okay I say that that I didn't just talk anyone. I didn't do anything bad, <laughs> and it's more, more a choice of a personal freedom and all that. Yeah, absolutely. So yes, you're absolutely right, Sham, and that's what I was trying to point us out too. That this is self love, shamefulness, standing by my own side is exactly would be self love. and of course you know it's about the center from where i am operating i can't just do anything and just say that no i i will embrace shamefulness right here obviously you're talking that we want we know what we are talking about and for those things which are taking me towards the higher which are take which are evolving me which are helping me grow if i have to break norms if i have to not follow dictates i will not be sorry for that i'm sorry but i cannot be sorry <laughs> yeah and i think again with self love also you know it's about honoring myself you know about a few months back i was in a situation where i was with somebody who would not honor basic requests or something you know something like that and i was finding it very strange because i had never been with in that ambience where that you know if i am saying okay i don't want to go and they'll be like no 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 come 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 and i would wonder why a person would do that and then i realized that probably they are not honoring their own self what they want what they like what they feel you know joy in and if i am not honoring my own self my own choices i am not able to honor the others choices so everything then starts with me and you know with meera because i uh, i you know there is this beautiful letter it's in hindi i had pulled it up so i don't know if you are aware but you know meera was feeling very uh, kind of he didn't know what to do because you know on one aspect she was he couldn't not she could not not give up krishna and yet people were you know accusing her of this and that so she had actually written to tulsi das who was a very you know who was the big saint at that time for uh, uh, the for her, his opinion here you go yeah so here it says that meera bai ne tulsi das ko patra likha so basically the thing was that she asked him that what do i do right so it says would anybody like to read it so lakshmi ji would you be comfortable reading it for us i can't find my specs right now okay okay i'll read it <laughs> i just i, I read it yeah okay so swast 
स्वस्थ श्री तुलसी कुल भूषण दूषण हरण गोसाई सो द वन हु टेक्स माई डर्ट राइट दूषण इज काइंड ऑफ द बैड राइट सो यू आर द वन हु टेक्स द नेगेटिव बार ही बार प्रणाम कर हूं अब हर हूं सोप समुदाय दट आई सल्यूट यू घर के सब जन हमारे जेते सब सबन उपाधि बढ़ाई साधु सग अरु भजन करत माही देव कलेस महाई दैट इफ आई एम दिस वॉट आई परसीव आई डोंट नो द एग्जैक्ट थिंग दैट when i am doing bhajan you know when i am singing with the sa- of you know sadhu sang that if i am escorting the sadhu the mahatma as i am singing the praise of lord they are saying this is kalesh this is wrong they say i am at fault mere mata pita ke samho hari bhakt sukhdai this लाइक माई मा मेरे माता पिता के जैसे जो हरी भक्त मुझे सुख देते हैं जो हरी के और भक्त की कंपनी आई थिंक इट गिव मी हैप्पीनेस और जस्ट टेकिंग द लॉर्ड्स नेम गिव्स मी द जॉय हमको कहा उचित करीबो है सो लिखिए समझाई देन व्हाट डू आई डू प्लीज राइट एंड टेल मी व्हाट डू आई हाउ डू आई प्रोसीड फ्रॉम हेयर बिकॉज माई फैमिली in which i am married to that person the context tells me i am doing the wrong tells me i am doing wrong uh, if anybody has anything that i said wrong please feel to free to unmute and correct i wish i could get my father online he would explain it very well so it goes further that meera bai ke patra you know how dulsi das ji replied to meera bai so this is really famous that ja ke priye na ram vidahi tajye tahi koti beri sa so the one who doesn't love ram tajye as in you give up you give that give them up like koti beri sa like they are like your enemies जदपि प्रेम सहने ही तजियो पिता प्रहलाद विभीषण बंधु भरत महतारी बलि गुरु तजियो आई थिंक इट्स बेटर दैट वी रीड द मीनिंग तुलसीदास जी ने मीरा को ये कहते हुए समझाया कि हे मीरा इन से मेरा मत है कि जो रिश्तेदार बंधु बांधव भगवान की भक्ति में बाधा करें और उनके हृदय में राम और सीता ना हो उनको त्याग देने में पुण्य है प्रेम में जो बाधा उपस्थित करें ईश्वर के प्रेम में मार्ग में जो रुकावट डालें ऐसे व्यक्ति यदि अपना भी कोई हो तो उसका त्याग करना ही श्रेष्ठ है कि सच अ पर्सन इफ ही इज वेरी क्लोज टू मी बट Ram and Sita don't live in their hearts and who are trying to stop me at every step. It's better to just give them up. त्याग करना ही सबसे श्रेष्ठ है. तो ये further says जैसे प्रलाद ने पिता का त्याग दिया. You know, I hope you all know the story of Hirnash, Hirna Kashyap and Prahlad. Vibhishan bandhu से अलग होए. You know, Vibhishan stood against Ravan and changed forces. Uh, the army. भरत ने अपनी माता से मुख मोड़ा द वन हु डिड सो मच फॉर हर राजा बलि अपने गुरु शुक्राचार्य का त्याग किया यू नो बलि स्टूड इन फ्रंट ऑफ हिम एंड सेड दैट नो नाउ दैट आई हैव गिवन माय वर्ड टू द साधु आई विल गिव हिम दैट तीन पार भूमि ब्रज की गोपियों ने अपने पतियों का साथ छोड़ा राइट लाइक द गोपीज ऑफ वृंदावन हाउ दे कुड नॉट be responsible towards their family because they were so much in awe of krishna to us anjan ko aankho aankho mein lagane ka kya fayda jisse aankh hi chali jaye you know how they used to put the surma and all in the eyes the kajal so he is saying that holding on to those people will if they are killing you killing the essence of you what's the point of making them the surma of your eyes right holding them wearing them 
यदि अपने प्रियजन रघुनाथ जी के प्रेम से ही वंचित करने लग जाएं, तो उन्हें त्याग कर प्रभु प्रेम में लगना चाहिए दट इफ द पीपल यू लव आर ट्राइंग टू स्टॉप यू फ्रॉम लविंग द डिवाइन देन इट्स बेटर दैट यू लीव दे अतः तो दिस इज कंक्लूजन हमें केवल उन्हीं माता पिता भाई बंधु के संग करना चाहिए संग करना चाहिए जो खुद भगवान में श्रद्धा विश्वास आस्था रखते हो और अपने से अप, अपने से तानों को भक्ति मार की प्रेरणा देते हो बाधा उत, बाधा उत्पत्त करने वाले माता पिता ही चाहे क्यों ना हो उनका त्याग करना देने में कोई बुराई नहीं है तो वी मस्ट ओनली हैव कंपनी ऑफ दोस्त हु हैव फेथ हु हैव बिलीव इन गॉड एंड इवन इफ आई हैव टू गिव अप माय ओन पेरेंट्स बिकॉज दे डू नॉट बिलीव इन गॉड और स्टॉप मी फ्रॉम बिलीविंग दैट इज नॉट अ फॉल्ट दैट इज नॉट बैड यू मस्ट डू दैट सो दैट वाज द रिप्लाई ऑफ तुलसी दास हु वी नो इज वाज अ रेवर्ड मास्टर टू मीरा बाय so you know they say that after this letter he then just left her home and i think went to her because i think her parents had passed off by then and then rana ji the one who was protecting her had died so then she left for her mama's house or something and then the rest of her life was much better so she did struggle a lot she did try to make things work but finally after getting this letter she You know, moved on to her, to other, to other house, and left her home. You know, we are talking about those times where, again, you know, this thing that you know, beti ki doli ghar se jaati hai, or then arthi wahan se aati hai type kind. Na, matlab it was considered. so big so big so big to actually walk or walk away and just because she loved krishna just because she couldn't do the responsibilities the duties of a high class rich bride so i think she is a perfect example you know of courage and of stubbornness right we are all stubborn aren't we for things that don't matter much we are stubborn for our comfort for our settled lives for this is how things should be this is how people should behave you know how mother says that nothing is wrong just things are out of place right and how shri aurobindo says that by your stumbling the world is perfected so, you know this stubbornness that i currently have maybe it's directed in a wrong place but at least the being i believe is being ready you know is being made ready so that it will be directed right kabhi to hoga ki meri aankhein khulengi aur main dekhunga ki are you know this is where the stubbornness is needed again all the same thing standing by my side honoring myself being stubborn for what is good for me not what is giving me pleasure the things that evolve me yeah any any reflections comments i'm sorry if that Uh, sharing was a bit heavy, although it was. <laughs> no, Taru, it was very interesting. I mean, very, very need need of tower. No, have to be really stubborn. Yes, thank you.
you know, I, it also is reminding me and I'm sharing it because we still have some time that uh, I don't know in which session this week we had taken up this poem called Dream Boat. It's by Sri Aurobindo. So I think that would also be applicable here because again, it's like following the call of my being. So if anybody would want to read it, we can reflect on it before we end the session. Okay. You want I me to stream it? Yeah, if you want to, otherwise I, I'll be happy to. <laughs> no, I can. Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. So the dream boat. Who was it that came to me in a boat made of dream fire with his flame brow and his sun gold body? Melted was a silence into a sweet secret murmur. Do you come now? Is the heart's fire ready? Hidden in the recesses of the heart, something shuddered. It recalled that the life's joy cherished image the felicity it, it must leave lost forever. And the boat passed and the goal god vanished. Now within the hollowness of the world's best inhabits for the love died and the old joy ended. Void of a felicity that has fled, gone forever. And the goal god and the dream boat come not. I may need to read it two, three times. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we are looking for. Yeah. So basically, you know how it says, Cyrus, here that the poem reveals the response we should make to the call of divine. You know how my voice, my inner voice is trying to guide me. There's the universe trying to tell me what to do. But I don't, I'm not ready, right? I am so badly sticking to my comfort and what I think I will lose if I follow that voice that I keep missing the boat. So here it says that who was it that came to me in a boat made of dream fur? Uh, it was fur when I read it. You know, dream fur, beautiful. With his flame bro and his sun gold body, melted was the silence into a sweet secret murmur. Do you come now? Is the heart's fire ready? You know, it's like moment to moment, moment to moment, we say that, you know, we can, we can either choose, you know, when we are choosing. So are we choosing to stay, say, with the mother, with the divine? Are we choosing... You know, okay, let me do this first. Let me buy this first. Let me make this achievement, professions, you know. We always have that bent towards that, that glitter that we see. And the, But the voice keeps asking that now, now are you ready? Now are you ready? You know how it said, you know, that mother says that, you know, uh, how it's like when somebody asked her that, how do I remember you always? And she says that, how do you forget? So, you know, here it's asking that, now are you ready? Do you come now? Is the heart's fire ready? But then it says, hidden in the recesses of the heart, something shuddered. Like, it, you know, I start getting scared that, oh, surrender? Oh, I have to give everything? Oh, I have to follow that? That means I have to leave this, 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 this? And I shudder, I get scared. It recalled all, all that the life's joy is cherished. Like all the things I believe had been giving me so much pleasure, so much joy, I shudder at the thought of leaving it. Image the felicity, it must leave forever. You know, it feels like that, oh my, I have to give up so much, which is not true actually, and yet it is. But I imagine the felicity I will have to leave if I follow that voice. And the boat passed and the gold god vanished. You know, you were getting that chance. You were saying you want to come on board, but you were holding on, sticking on to so much. That yes, yes, I will take your name, but let me first have this, do this, go there. 
yes 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 you are important but you know i have other important things too and the boat passed and the gold got vanished now within the hollowness of the world's breast inhabits because obviously these things they don't last right that's the issue it everything is temporary and you you don't feel that contentment that completion that you are seeking so within the hollowness of the world's breast inhabits for the love died and the old joy ended so the things that were making me happy giving me pleasure they stop right void of a felicity that has fled gone forever so the smallness the petty the temporary that i stick to thinking that this is completing me all that goes away and the gold god and the dream boat come known so now <laughs> i have nothing right what i was sticking to it ended and yeah so this was by shri aurobindo a beautiful poem the dream boat but because i so want to be appreciated and respected and considered a good person i keep missing my boats so here is this topic of embracing shamelessness so that i can you know achieve the purpose of my life do something evolve i know i'm saying this again and again but any price that i pay for that is less So let, let's just before we and also go through the poem that just the not the poem or whatever the word that were written for the topic. So I am humiliated and often blamed. Don't rock the boat. Have some shame. I give in. I remain the same. the outside world and my habits and desires stop me from changing the rules of the game right any time i want to do something out of the ordinary i'm blamed i'm humiliated i'm saying that don't you have shame don't rock the boat don't dry your dirty laundry in public just shrug it under the carpet hide it let things be so i give in i remain the same so i don't change then i remain the same the outside world and my habits and desires stop me from changing the rules of the game i'm touched by grace i turn within it's impossible now to re- remain the same i refuse the blame i refuse the shame in faith my expands i now reclaim being shameless gives me strength helps me follow my instincts my true aim so touch by grace i turn within because the whole thing that's happening before is i am always outside right looking outside being outside everything is outside my achievements my goals my duties my responsibilities so i'm touched by grace i turn within it's impossible now to remain the same you know how it said i give in i remain the same and then there comes a point where, where it's not a choice anymore i refuse the blame you know you keep blaming me that's fine like i refuse to take the blame i refuse to feel a shame in faith my expands i now reclaim i know i am not this limited self i know i am more i reclaim you know how we were talking about self love standing by my own side honoring myself being shameless gives me strength you know it's quite you know how they say the virodha bhasi like it's quite opposite and so we see how many things are that the things we are told are wrong so being shameless gives me strength helps me follow my instincts my true aim and there should be a full stop here not a comma i apologize <laughs> so that for yeah so that was embracing shamelessness 
Yes, sir. I yeah, I just had a question. Like you know, you mentioned, you know, sometimes the inner voice is telling you, or you know, the universe tells you, but you don't want to change. So can you just share a simple example, like how? I mean, you know, how do you recognize that inner voice is telling you, or universe telling you, and you know, uh, at the same time, you know, when does it come to you? You know, from and but you still don't want to change. If you can just share a simple example. Yeah, I. Uh, so basically, Cyrus, like you know, it's like if you have to do anything, like say. Right now, just before the session, I got a call that required my attention. Somebody was somewhere to do my work. And yet, it was important for me to just, you know, have those 10 minutes before the session to sit with myself, to just, you know, reflect. And I wanted to tell them that, you know, can I call you after the session? And yet, knowing that they are there for my work, I couldn't, you know, and then when I was talking to them, there was this, I don't know, I suddenly started feeling pukey and I started feeling a headache and it was like a repulsive feeling that why can't you just say? So it's not about the other. It's about what I feel I must do. You know how we talk about, so if we think about something, an action, a thought, a person, like, you know, just that thing, whether it expands me or it kind of, you know, shrinks me. So just coming from that center that I know, you know, and we all know, we say we might not know, but I don't think any of us are, at least the ones here right now, we have that sensitivity that we know what I can follow, what is my calling. And yet, because I know this looks cool, or this is what the world is trying to tell me, or I would feel, look, or I don't know, it would make me feel more settled and all. I choose differently. So I don't know if that was, I was a bit distracted. But if that answers your question, you can ask again. And I... Yeah, I'm not very... It's okay. I'm not very clear yet, to be honest. You know? Because you did me mention again. that, yeah. uh, you know, like you got a call and you know, you like you said, someone was kind of doing your work. Hmm. So, and at the same time, you had the session. Hmm. So, uh, I mean, obviously, you know, you are caught in both places because, you know, yeah. so there's nothing wrong, right? I mean, and yes. someone is helping you, you need to finish that. And yes, you yes. could have and even yet post I like my body and my mind, although a part of them were like, you know, they are there for you, you must do that. And yet I was feeling that strong thing that right now this is important. Pay attention here. Right. Right. So that calling, that voice is there. But then you know, aren't they also helping? I mean, someone is doing your work, right? So Yeah. And, and I'm saying and that, you're talking. Yeah. So, you know, there's a mental domain, right? Like I, I have a body. I'm not just the body. I have a mind which has lots of logic, but I am not just logic, right? So logically, exactly what you're saying makes sense. And I was unable to say no. And yet there was so much resistance that no, this is not important right now. And it could have been done later too. And yet because it was my job, I couldn't straight away say no. It's not a very good example. And yet, because it was so recent, I was sharing it with you that how do you know? I'm saying you know because you, when you're doing it, it feels wrong. There is resistance. Yeah, you don't, like there is you repulsion. Said, I mean, yeah, you don't feel great inside. You mean that way? You know. Yes. And no, it's like one thing is you don't feel great inside. I was feeling that repulsion from the body. Like I wanted to puke on the phone that, you know, I'm making myself do something which is like going against what I should be doing. Like it was so, although it's such a small thing, right? It was just a brief thing and it just required a little bit of attention. And yet because something was saying that right now something else is important. Hey, this thing can wait. 
I was feeling that strong thing that no, I cannot do this. Right. So if I'm trying, if I'm getting you correctly, I mean, another way of saying it is that you know, say sometimes when you know you are in in a crossroad, and you kind of just take a few moments, and that itself will tell you, you know, that uh, you know where is the inner voice coming from? I mean, like what is more comfortable, or what is what. you know what is taking you where i mean would that uh, does that make some sense i mean yeah absolutely so basically the point is that we don't firstly know what we want right we are usually led by outside at what is what appears to be good i right. don't consult myself right that okay it appears to be true but do you really want it right, right. it's a very silly thing but i don't like it feels that how can i not right but i don't so but if i connect within there are things which i feel expanded about so like if i'm talking about somebody there's something inside me which is feeling small if i am praising someone there's something in me which feels expanded right right so just connecting to that voice that feeling that you know that guide from inside which is saying yes do it yeah go for it you know it's like say when we talk to children you know about what they want to become when they grow up you know they are so creative right like little children anything and everything they could say i want to be a sweeper in the school you know i've heard that you know small a poet a singer a dancer and yet as we grow up how limited these choices become right just engineer just doctor i mean it's improving drastically yeah, of course. how does no that question. happen right like how yeah. does from this we become this right because we are not listening to the calls we are not listening because maybe money fame popularity is so important that the other things we are not listening to of calls right yeah yeah so just that ways that if i have to if i have to follow you know lot of times we don't know what we want but we know we don't want this we don't know what we want to do but we know we don't want to do this 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 so that also takes us right like the basic principle of upanishad right neti neti ti neti that when we keep giving of the false when we keep giving of what is making we feel constricted it will take me to the thing which make me expand right because i don't know yet now what is making me expanded or what is the call so i take the way of neti neti that not this not this not this not this i remove that from my life right yeah thanks a lot sorry i should have thought of a better example <laughs> but no that's fair i mean every time you're not going to get uh, 10 examples but since you mentioned it i just wanted something simple to try and understand you know it better thank you yeah thank you uh so uh we'll end the session here we'll see i just reflect on it whether this we would be taking the same topic next time or i think we are done so thank you so much for joining today for sharing and reflecting together and just taking this last minute to thank grace for the opportunity of such sessions which help me pause and think especially about the things which are under cover which are under hidden under ways and pray that may everybody be truly at peace at joy and well to truly peaceful true joy and wellness pray for everyone Thank you so much.